The vaccines continue to be highly effective in preventing severe disease, hospitalization, and death due to COVID-19 infection, even in the face of the Delta variant surge, which is currently the most prevalent variant in the world. However, most real-world data comes from Pfizer, Moderna, J&J, and AstraZeneca. So finally, we have a different real-world data coming from Malaysia, which proves that Sinovac do work. Let's watch this. <music> We all know that different studies with regard to vaccine effectiveness have been published. In this study out of the University of Edinburgh, it shows that vaccine efficacy against severe COVID-19 has not significantly decreased since the surge of the Delta variant. It is around 92% and does not significantly differ between AstraZeneca, Pfizer, or Moderna vaccines. In fact, in a recent presentation to the Vaccines Related Biological Products Advisory Committee as of September 17, 2021, Dr. Jonathan Stern clearly shows that from this data, vaccine efficacy against severe COVID-19 has not significantly decreased since the Delta surge, and that several real-world data have already been published, including one from Netherlands regarding vaccine effectiveness showing a 95% effectiveness against hospitalization, a 97% effectiveness against ICU admission among different vaccines, whether it's Pfizer, Moderna, AstraZeneca, or j, &J where the Delta variant is the most prevalent variant in their locality. How about Sinovac? Finally, just recently analyzed data from Malaysia, which we know is close to the heart of the Filipinos, because as both countries are neighbors and the same type of vaccine that has been received by the general population, which is Sinovac. So this real world data out of Malaysia as of September 7, 2021, for me is a very important information that I need to share to most of my viewers. The Department of Health of Malaysia clearly shows that around 99.42% of those who were vaccinated with AstraZeneca, 97% of Pfizer, and more than 90% of Sinovac resulted in significant vaccine effectiveness in preventing COVID-19 related deaths. And that the related death rate amongst those vaccinated, fully vaccinated in Malaysia against COVID-19 was only 0.009%. Clearly showing, therefore, that this Malaysia data as of September 7, where Delta variant has been the predominant variant in the locality, shows that all available vaccines, whether it's Sinovac, whether it's AstraZeneca or Pfizer, were all highly effective in preventing severe disease, hospitalization, and death due to COVID-19. But yes, you will need, however, both doses of the primary and second dose to get the complete maximum protection. So clearly, therefore, real-world data with regard to different COVID-19 vaccines have proven this now that they're effective in what we want the vaccines to do. And that is to prevent severe disease, hospitalization, and death. And it is therefore time to stop the misinformation. How about the controversial reports regarding a certain vaccine has waning effect, waning immunity? Here is what we know. When we talk about waning immunity, it's likely referring to the risk of getting the infection and not waning effectiveness against the symptomatic infection and not waning effectiveness against severe disease. Remember in my previous video, while I was clearly emphasizing that while neutralizing antibodies decrease over time as they are supposed to, 
the protective immunity provided by our memory B and T cells continue to be present. And they are there ready to mount a defense once the body is again exposed to the virus. That's why my own opinion is I am still against any form of boosters at the moment as data have not been shown for them to be needed, except among immunocompromised hosts. As this article from Lancet clearly explained, although the benefits of primary COVID-19 vaccination clearly outweigh the risk, there could be a risk if boosters are widely introduced too soon, too frequently, especially with vaccines that can have immune-mediated related side effects such as myocarditis, which is more common after the second dose of an mRNA vaccine, or the guillain balle syndrome, which has been associated with adenovirus vectored COVID-19 vaccines. Thus, widespread boosting should only be undertaken if there is clear evidence that it is appropriate. So let's wait for the data. We know that the current evidence does not, I repeat, does not appear to show the need for boosting for the general population in which efficacy against severe disease remains very high. Remember, the first thing to know about COVID-19 vaccines is that they're doing exactly what they were designed and authorized to do. You could clearly see the rates of COVID-19 disease have undertaken an unprecedented plunge among those immunized. And the second thing to remember is that no vaccines are 100% effective at preventing infection or disease, so that when the virus does affect the immunized, it seems to accumulate to lower levels and spread less enthusiastically to the new host. It's causing, on average, therefore, milder or more transient symptoms. And this is proven among my patients who receive or who got breakthrough infections. And what is true is that the overwhelming majority of the COVID-19 infection right now are among the unvaccinated. So we therefore look at vaccines as flame retardants so that when it comes to the coronavirus as such, some vaccinated people will still get infected. And a small subset of these individuals is still getting sick. And this is completely expected. But this breakthrough infection have been, however, labeled by some as vaccine failure, which is unfortunately untrue, obviously wrong, and false. As Catherine Brew of the Atlantic paper succinctly describes, if humans are wood that fuels the flame, and coronavirus are the sparks that ignite it, vaccines are the fire suppressants that protect best against the worst of the viral burn, that is severe disease, hospitalization, and death. So in short, the vaccines that are currently available to us are all safe, effective, and they do save lives. Whether you have received Sinovac or Pfizer or JNJ, let's all stop the misinformation that one is better than the other. And that the current available evidence does not show the need for widespread use of booster vaccination in populations that have already received an effective primary vaccination regimen. Again, I hope this video helps reassure you that what you have received do work and help protect you against severe disease and hospitalization and death. This is Dr. Jerry Tan. See you again soon.